Laravel collection methods. 15. Number one, max. Max is a method that returns the maximum value of a given key. For example, ID is going to be 5. 5 is the highest ID we have. Age, 68. 68 is the highest age we have, and kids, 4. Now, the inverse of max is min. So the min number of kids is 1. The uh, min ID is also 1. And then the min age is going to be 22. After that, we have average, AVG. The average age is 38.6. The average kids is 2.2. And an alias of the longer form of average. Average and ABG do the same thing, same exact thing. So if you do age on either of them, they'll get the same age or average. Median, the middle number. What is the middle number of kids? Well, that's gonna be two. The middle age, 28, and so on. Next, let's cover mode. Mode stands for the number most often cited out of the values. For kids, it's gonna be two because there's three people with two kids. It's the number most often there. After that, let's do sum. What's the total number of kids? The total number of ID and then adding up all of the years of wisdom between them. It's going to sum up the numbers to the total. After that, sort by. We're going to sort by ascending, meaning lowest to highest, by default. Next, we can reverse that by sorting by descending, which is going to be oldest to youngest. 68, 52, 28, 23, then 22. So ascending lowest to highest, descending is oldest to youngest. Nth. Nth is going to start at the first element of our collection and then follow every two elements and then get a subset based on that pattern. So we're going to get John, Tim, and Ray. If we do four, the nth four, we're going to get the first and last element. And if we do one, we're going to get every single element, the nth element after the starting point. It's a pattern and it gets a subset based on that pattern. Moving on, we have first. This will get the first element from our collection. You can also pass a callback function and you'll say, get the first element after this condition is true. So we'll set that condition to say, get the first element where the person ID is greater than three, then we'll get Sam. And if we do greater than or equal to three, then we'll get Tim. Or you can just bypass the callback. Next we'll do last. Last is the same thing. Get the last person whose ID is less than four, that'll be Tim, less than equal will be Sam, or bypass the callback altogether. Next, let's do where, probably one of the most popular ones. Where name is John. This is going to return an array. We can also pass a logical operator as our middle value. Uh, we can change the key, we can say where type is user class. Um, we can say where age is greater than or equal to 23 and it's always going to return an array we can even say where age does not equal 23 fancy if um, but returns an array after that we can do first where and this is going to just be a combination of first and where it's going to get the first element where a condition is true so we're going to use the where to get an array of things and it's going to return the first element from that array and this bad example is going to return the element of John. If it's not equal to user class, then it will return the Tim person. We're going to get the first element where a condition is true. All right, so after that, we're going to move on to where between. The first item is going to be the property, and the second parameter is going to be a two element array of values. And we want to get the people where the age is between 53 and 70 and where the age is between 21 and 50 for example and just kind of mess around with that so anybody with an age over 50 is going to be out anybody with an age under 21 is going to be out now the inverse of where between is going to be where not between and so now we just got the inverse of our current value and yeah then we can do where in where in where in is going to say, okay, where the ID of each person is in, one, two, or three. So on the right side, you'll see we get a three person collection based on the name being Ray, Sarah, or Sam. Anybody who doesn't have a name of Ray, Sarah, or Sam was not in, and then you can inverse that and say, we're not in, and say, hey, get everybody without that name. After that, we can do where null, omit the second parameter, and we can say where the type is null. 
So we'll get Tim and Sam in this example because their type is null and everybody else's is not. The inverse of where null is where not null. And so now we'll get John, Sarah, and Ray. And it would just be like commenting those elements out. Moving on. We're not null. Um, we're going to move on to key by. Now, key by is going to be very synonymous with group and it's going to be a little funky. But key by is going to key each element by, in this example, their name. So it's going to make it from an indexed array, which we currently have, to an associative. And then we can just say, hey, key by name, and then we can get that element by referencing the given name. Now, we also have group by, and the difference between key by and group by is key by returns a single element, group by returns in a list or an array of elements. If, for example, if we got the index of zero, for group by it works. If we do that for key by, we get a warning. Now, one of the things with group by is if we do something like type, we're going to actually get a group of three users and two nulls. If we do group by user class, the actual array is going to be three elements because there are three items with type of user class. If we do null, we're going to get two items in our array. Now, if we do key by, it doesn't work. And we'll actually overwrite any previous values and we'll only return one item, which is the last item that meets the given type. So group by returns an array, key by returns a single item, and it's the last item that meets the condition. Those are the two differences. Now using key by or group by, let's actually move on to the next method, and that's keys. Get the keys. So whether it's indexed or whether they're associative, it's going to get the keys. By default, we have index, so we're going to get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. When we did group by, we just got the given associative keys. Another really popular one is pluck. Now pluck accepts two parameters. The first is going to be the value, the second is going to be the key, and the key is optional. If you try to pass in more than two, it won't do anything. Um, so you should only pass in a maximum of two. But it's gonna create an array, and if you only pass in one item, it'll be an indexed array. If you pass in two, the first item will be the value, the second will be the key for the array. So yeah. And then again, one item is an indexed array. Using pluck, we can go on to the next method. We're going to pluck the values for kids. And then we're going to say unique. Notice it removes all duplicate values. We only get unique values. Every time we reload the page with shuffle, it will actually change up the values. It will change up the order of our array. Whereas when we remove it, it won't. Next is search. Now search is pretty cool, but also a little funky. You can search for a value and get the key. Because we have an indexed array, we can search for element two and we'll get the index. If we want to group by name and then search, and actually, eh, we'll probably want a key by here, won't we? Um, we have a group by here, but let's go and key by. And we're going to get the value. And because we're key buying, because the key is name now, when we search, we get Tim as the searched value. Search for the value, get the key. Next we have chunk. The chunk method breaks the collection into multiple smaller collections of a given size. John and Sarah are gonna to be together, Tim and Sam are gonna to be together, and then Ray will be the only item in the third index of this array. If we change the chunk size to three, then it's gonna be John, Sarah, and Tim, and then Sam and Ray will be the second array. We're just chunking it into smaller arrays. Next we have the zip method. Now what zip's going to do is going to take a collection and an array and then it's going to create an array of an arrays where the collections item lines up with the zips item. After that we're going to go back to our original collection and run pipe. Pipe, because I really like pipe, is you can do data collection to array and then again just add your meta. You can do homeowners collection where homeowners true count. Then you can do average age equals collection average age. And then you can do total number of dependents, and you can do collection sum kids. And there you go. That is pipe. We just piped our collection and transformed it to a data meta output. Also notice that we added two more methods. To array, 
and count. All is an alias of two array. And notice that when we remove all or two array, we get illuminate collection up there, but when we add it back, it goes away. Two array and all make it an array, and then we also have two JSON to make it JSON. Next, we have forget. Forget lets us forget an element from our collection based on the key. So right now we're forgetting by the index, but if we group by type, then we can actually forget by the user class because that will be our key. And then we can forget by an empty string, get the value by the key, whether it be indexed or associated. So next we have map. We're just gonna take the item and we're gonna map each item and just get the ID. We're just getting a single. We could also get an array. You're just going through each item and mapping it into an output. After that, we can do each. And oop, dump is not gonna work because it's an array. Die and dump's not gonna work, but we can dump it out. We're just iterating, but each is for each and doesn't return anything, whereas item returns something new. Dump does not, it just does something. Filter, only return the items that meet that condition. Slice, get the items between that index or after that index. Pop. So we're going to pop the last item and return it. Shift is going to pop the first item and return it. Reverse is going to reverse the array or collection. Every is going to check that every single item in the collection meets that condition. Sum is going to check that some of the items in the array meet that condition. Contains is an alias of sum. And then we have join, which we can pluck the name and join, making a common delimited string list. And then we have the split method, which similar to chunk, but chunk makes an array, split makes the um, each section actually collections. So chunk chunks into arrays, where split chunks into smaller collections. Then we have reduce. Reduce accepts an accumulator or a carrier. I'm going to call it a names list and then an item. Then we're going to deconstruct each name or spread it out and then build up an array of all the names and then finally, the last parameter is set the default value to an array. Reduce is pretty powerful in JS, honestly, not so much in PHP. After that, we have is empty. Is the collection empty? True or false? And then we have the inverse of is empty, which is not empty. Then we have these when not empty and when empty functions that accept callbacks with our collection. When not empty, what do we want to do with our collection? Well, let's just push and caboose, and you can see it there. Now, if we change that to when empty, it actually won't run unless we empty out array, and then it will, and you can see caboose there. Is, is empty and is not, not empty, we're going to use this take method. Take one item, take two items, take three items, take four items, take five items. How many items do you want to take? Then we can say take items until, and then have a callback function until the person name is Sam. So we'll get John, Sarah, and Tim. And then if we do until is Ray, or we do it based on the age, you just take items from the collection until. And then the only other function with take until is take while. Take while person age, which is the inverse of take until. Um, take while, the person type is null. Then after we run those take methods, we actually have the inverse of take itself, which is skip skip all the items, skip until, and skip while. So skip while, and then the callback function, skip while the item name does not equal Sarah. And so then Sarah will be our first item, skip while item name does not equal Ray, and then skip until item name equals Ray, or until item name equals Sarah. So that's take, take while, take until, skip, skip while, and skip until. Next, we have our pop method. Pop is going to remove the last element of the collection and return it. Shift is going to be the inverse of pop, removing and returning the first element. After that, we can add an element to the end of our collection using push, and we can prepend an element at the beginning of our collection using prepend. Then we have replace. Now, replace is a pretty cool one. So we can replace a single item, or we can go ahead and just replace the rest of the items in our collection. We just have to reference the ID and then just replace the parts of the collection we want to replace, just matching the structure of the collection as we do it. So now we replaced all of the names. After that, we have put. Put lets us define a key and then a value that we are going to put into our collection. And so the rest of our collection is an indexed collection 
but we just added an associative key. We can also replace using put by referencing the proper index or an existing key. Close this out, we're going to run a few helper functions. So the first one is dump. And so dump actually is the same thing as die and dump, but it doesn't actually die. And then you also have dd, which is right here, but it doesn't work in the package I'm using. So dump and die and dump. The last one is macro. You can add your own custom functions. Um, but unlike everything else, you can't actually use a shorthand function. You have to use a longhand function. And it's because you need access to this. So then you can just do that and check it out, check it out, check it out. Boom. You have your own custom function. Separate.